All right, happy to spend a few minutes today with Coach Russell Brock and Kristen Nuss of LSU Beach Volleyball. Thank y'all so much for a few minutes. Uh, wanted to catch up with y'all. I think this is the fir the first time we've had coach and player. Um, so I've, I've tried to do something new uh, every episode and, and get a new dynamic. So we've got the coach and player dynamic, which which should be interesting. Uh, hopefully it uh, goes well. Um, coach, I'll, I'll start with you. Um, one of the things that I've been thinking about lately is how this this situation we're all in has disrupted so many of our plans and and things that all of us no matter what walk of life we're in have been working toward I think for y'all that's about as evident as, as it could be for for anybody this is this season was really something you had been building toward for a long time Grant did a great job writing about it before the season and we've talked about it before I think we talked about it last year before you guys went to nationals, um, just how you've been building step by step. And, you know, six, seven years ago when y'all started this process, kind of having a vision and outlining it. And y'all had just started to, I don't want to say just started to, but this year you had really hit that point where you're number one in the country. You beat UCLA twice. Um, you, you Things were trending in that direction. And then all of a sudden it comes to a halt. How, how do you deal with that? How, how do you even begin to, to cope with that, with – building something for so long and then something like this comes along and it's out of your control. Yeah. I think that, um, you know, part of, part of the ability to deal with it is understanding that one, there's a bigger picture. Obviously there's something pretty remarkable going on. A um, lot more tragic um, situations that are very evident for us to see other than our losing our season, clearly not something that we hope for and still, you know, devastating to, you know, to a degree. Um, but to know that there's other things that are that are really challenging life and death type of situations um, that helps with the perspective. I think another thing that really helps is that this is not just something that happened in, you know, in our backyard in our sand courts like this is a nationwide issue. And, you know, even outside of our season that was lost, we know even on our campus softball was trending in an unbelievably exciting direction. Um, track and field was literally at nationals as the number one ranked team for men's and women's. So really close to home, we can see like we're not the only ones. Um, and clearly every other beach team, every other track and field team, every other sports team in the spring throughout the country, and our basketball teams both had their seasons cut short and had a lot of promise heading forward. So, you know, golf, tennis, everybody. So um, part of it is a perspective of, yeah, yeah we, we were building and yeah, we had a great opportunity, but there's bigger things and there's also other people that are impacted as well. So I, I think that th that whole accumulation of factors allows us to see that, um, you know, that, that it's not the end of the world um, that our season was cut short. And I think even now, um, as we've had a, a little bit of time to step away, um, we already know our seniors, you know, are going to have the opportunity to come back. Um, we know our team next Next year is going to be incredibly good. And, you know, looking back a year from now, we may be sitting in an even more amazing season um, right in the middle of it. So, you know, we can't assume that while um, this is clearly not what we planned for, um, not what we'd hoped for, that at the end of the day, at the real end of the day, that this is going to be something that we'll look back and regret. Like it may be something that leads us into, I mean, all, all change initiates with, like you need to do something differently. Like if you stay on the same pathway, nothing will change. So if we want to be better, maybe this is the, you know, the, the catalyst for a change for a positive direction and kind of that beauty from ashes type of thing. Kristen, I'll ask you the same question from your perspective as a student athlete, um, as a senior, somebody that's been around the program, how have you kind of coped with, with the disruption of the season? What was it like to go through um, that, that, that I guess week or two week span where it went from you guys were beating UCLA and everything was kind of cruising uh, in the right direction. Then all of a sudden the season's over. Um, one first I'd say, wow, I have to follow that response <laughs> from Russell. That was, <laughs> that was pretty good. Um, but I mean, not going to lie, when we first received the news, like it was pretty like heartbreaking, um, especially that like first two days, just like, wow, like, it's over. Like, what, what do we do? Um, but I mean, like Russell said, like we knew there was a bigger picture um, and it was happening to other people. Um, and I've kind of like come to realize that over these past few weeks, now that we've had time to kind of like 
think about what's going on and it is like life or death like I've been in my house haven't really gone anywhere um but it really was like it was heartbreaking but now moved on and like Rosa said again like we're ready some of the seniors are coming back and we're ready for a uh, year get back and get back on track to the goals that we had ahead of ourselves. Kristen can you take me back to that home meet with UCLA where the you know the the, the fans are packing the the arena and it was I mean it, it wasn't just the greatest moment I think in LSU beach volleyball history it was one of the best maybe in college beach volleyball history just the the energy there the the atmosphere I don't think the sport's ever seen anything like that what was it like to to be in the thick of that it's hard to really even kind of describe it because it really doesn't do it justice like you really had to just be there and see it um but it leading up to that game I was like telling people on the team I was like I think there's going to be a good amount of people like I think people are going to come it's one versus two UCLA like pretty big game but when we start getting closer and closer to that game time and people were just kept piling in and it was like shoulder to shoulder it far exceeded my expectations it was just it was really just breathtaking to be able to walk out on that court and look both ways and see people like shoulder to shoulder it really was like that night did so much for not only like Louisiana beach volleyball but beach volleyball across the country um it was huge very impactful night and something I will definitely never forget that was memorable Coach, how about from your perspective? Yeah, you know, once again, it's hard to really put into words. Um, I think, and we talk about this a lot, like with a lot of different people, but I think one of the things that stands out most to me is like, you know, we've talked about a vision, like even before Kristen came, like we had this vision of what it was going to look like. Um, and that's part of how we sold, you know, our program for years was hey we're gonna have the stadium like it's gonna be the best beach stadium in the country like we're gonna be the best team in the country and we're gonna bring in the best programs in the country and we're gonna have these amazing matches so like in my mind um like i i envisioned that place full um so like visually it was like oh yeah i've seen this in my mind before but the sounds and the energy and all of that like it it blew me away. Like even with like as grand of visions as, as we could have possibly had, like the feeling in there was literally electric. It rivaled what you feel when you're in Tiger Stadium and it's full, you know, or when you go into the Death Dome and it's packed out, you know, it literally had that feeling. And it, that was something that I hadn't even considered what it might be. Um, and it was, uh, it was powerful. Um, Kristen, I don't know, we haven't even talked about this, but just curious, like from my perspective, one of the things was like, I was coaching the entire time until like the very, very end, but you got to kind of sit for a round while the fours, fives and sixes were playing. Was it challenging at all? Like warming up and knowing those matches were going on and trying to get ready to play like big matches while something so incredible was happening? It definitely was a little tricky trying to get in our warm-ups right next to uh, court four was actually playing at the time and a court had opened. So we were right next to court four and just like warming up, we, me and Claire would be like peppering and then we kind of like look over and be like, yes, we got a point. And just like hearing everyone. And we were even trying to like, while we were warming up, we were also trying to get like the crowd into it to get a little like go Tigers, like back and forth. Um, but it was definitely a pretty surreal thing trying to like warm up while everyone is cheering and everything but we were like we did come back and get focused we had a nice little like group discussion amongst like the ones and threes before we kind of went out to our court got a little pumped up but it was pro it was probably one of the better warm-ups just because we had so much adrenaline but also a strange warm-up because we were kind of like looking back and forth chris and coach mentioned it a little bit earlier but seniors do get the chance to come back now in, in these spring sports. What was that period like in limbo where you don't really know what the future holds? We've all kind of been in limbo in, in some form or fashion. We're still in limbo with so many things, but at least there's some certainty now with the ability to come back for another year. What was that period like where, where you just didn't really know what was going to happen? And what was it like to find out that that year would be available? Um, it was kind of like a discussion amongst all of our seniors we were kind of like, what do we do? I personally, I just, 
I had a feeling they were going to, so I never really kind of doubted the fact that we weren't going to be able to come back. I just figured it would. So I never really lost like the hope in that. Um, but it definitely was, it was more tough in that like this season that we had been building up to had just like come to an end. And I never really saw it, like completely over for me as far as like LSU beach volleyball. Um, so yeah, I don't really, it wasn't really a, I don't know how to particularly answer for that in the O stage. Coach, how about yeah, for you? I think, yeah, for us, it was kind of the same thing. Like we, we knew that that was part of the discussion. So one of the first things that we did um, was we got on, on the phone with our seniors and said, hey, can y'all come and meet? So it's like, it was literally, uh, and it was all such a blur, but it may have been like Friday was whenever it kind of all hit the fan. And then we had the weekend and on Monday, we called all our seniors and said, hey, when can y'all meet? And they're like, hey, we can come right now. So we'll come right now. So they all came to the office and we said, look, we don't know what's gonna happen, um, but there's a lot of chatter about you guys coming back. So we wanna know how we can best fight for you. Um, you know, when we talk to our administrators, when we talk to you know anybody that we can talk to, like, what do y'all want? Because if they all said, you know what, like that was that was the end. Like we don't want to come back and play. Like it was too special. It'll be too painful or whatever. Then we weren't going to fight for them to get another year. But if they were all on board with, hey, we want to do this again, then we were going to do whatever we could. And granted, we don't have a ton of leverage, um, but the ability for us to kind of be united and say, hey, we know that this is tough um, for you guys particularly, and we want to figure out like what we can do as a staff and as an athletic department somehow to try and push for um, for the opportunity to get you what you want moving forward. So that was that was literally the first conversation that we had after kind of the news officially broke. And, you know, I think our administrators did a great job of, um, I know, representing those wishes um, up the ladder and obviously helped contribute to getting in some position where you know, the ones that can want can and want to um, and are able to come back to come back and join us for another year. I think also, sorry to add to that, the hardest part of that was kind of like, no, like obviously I had hoped that like I was going to get another year and I wanted to come back like if I was given the opportunity. I think the hardest part though was knowing that like some of our seniors can't come back and kind of figuring out like what is our class going to look like without some of those people. I think that's still kind of what I'm dealing with but like it's just crazy to think like okay we're going to be here another year but without some people that have I've been with for the past four years. A question for both of y'all Chris and you can start what's a, a day look like for you right now a typical day um, for, for you from the student athlete perspective I know y'all are back in class this week that's completely different than what it was before having to do everything online and trying to find ways to train by yourself and not having access to the facilities that you're used to, um, trying to, you know, take care of nutrition in ways that you haven't had to before. What's sort of the, the typical day like, um, the challenges and the coach after she answers, you can kind of answer the same thing, but from the coach's perspective. Um, this time has actually given me opportunity to dive into my nutrition and really like focus on that. Um, but a typical day, luckily I don't have any like scheduled on like, zoom classes or anything so i kind of wake up usually around like eight or nine i get a nice little workout in it kind of depends on the day like monday wednesday friday i kind of do a certain thing tuesday thursday i do a certain thing but it's a little bit of like cardio literally in my like front lawn i have a ladder that i do some ladder work um and then i usually follow a, um, a like 30 minute cardio thing because that's actually what i have to do for my tennis class that i'm supposed to be in but can't really be doing um, and then in my backyard, my dad in our garage had a um, piece of like plywood, I guess. I don't know if that's what it's called. Just a big piece of wood. And we have a tree in our backyard that I'd lean it up against. And I kind of just like pepper with myself, get as many like touches on the volleyball as I can. Um, and that's about it as far as working out. And then I usually like come inside, I'll do a little recovery drink, take a shower, and then get into school stuff and kind of do my homework if I have any homework or just kind of whatever that's my day yeah uh you know it's interesting because like I have what I'm supposed to do but I also have 
a few students who live at my house. Um, so it's kind of balancing, um, you know, what I have to do. That's one of the reasons why I'm out on the porch, you know, classes going on inside the house in a few different rooms. We've got three kids and they all, you know, at various points of the day have some type of online stuff or maybe my wife's helping them with some study. So um, you kind of have to juggle that, that uh, environment, um, which is great because I don't mind being outside, particularly around this time when we would normally be outside all day, every day. And now we don't get that opportunity. So to continue to be outside isn't a problem. Um, but then we've got lots of Zoom meetings and lots of emails and lots of phone calls. I think one of the things that we're, now that we're back in school as a staff, what we're really trying to work on is making sure we're able to stay in touch with our athletes. Um, it's, it's hard not um, being able to be face to face with people who you are normally face to face with every day. And around this time of year, you know, six day a week, we're able to hang out with our beach family like all the time, um, specifically when we're traveling, we have home competitions. I mean, we're with each other 10 hours a day. And um, so that's a big adjustment. And so finding ways to stay connected, clearly we had a ton of momentum um, in the spring. I mean, three weeks, Weeks ago, we as high as we've ever been as far as momentum goes in our team chemistry. Um, how do we lose that momentum? How do we capitalize on where we were and continue to move forward and and try and develop it without kind of overwhelming um, our athletes, um, especially while they're now back in school. Um, also, compliance comes into play now. We didn't have to worry about compliance before because we had so many hours. It's like, man, when we were done, like we're like, hey, we'll see you tomorrow. Um, not a big deal but now that we don't um, get to see it's like what's that balance of what we can and can't do uh, and then you know we're trying to figure out as well like uh, we're brainstorming how we can be um, a positive impact to those around us who may be even more needy so uh, there's tons of things I've been um, amazed at how fast the days go I I figured honestly in my mind and it kind of started out that way that we'd be in a position where you know, you basically by two o'clock, you'd be like, man, what am I going to do for the rest of the day until it's time to go to bed? But now to start to understand what needs to be done and even brainstorming, even with our athletes about, okay, how can we, how can we get involved? If we can't leave our houses, how can we still get involved? And one of the messages that we've sent out is, you know, now people know who we are. Like we've raised awareness for our sport. We've um, kind of, imposed ourselves on our community in a great way how can we use that um, to help our community now and I think that you know here I know you did a great uh, interview with Fran and Sarah with indoor volleyball and I think that they have great ideas I've been talking with Beth with softball and some of their assistant coaches on trying to get some ideas on how can we be how can we impact our community in a positive way and not just kind of revert back to okay I've got I've got my responsibilities, I can do my check boxes, I can get them done and then wait for the next day to happen. It's, it's, a, it's a, a constant process of not only being responsible with what we need to do, but how can we use kind of our newfound influence to make this world that we live in, this community that we're a part of um, better in some way when lots of people are struggling. I think y'all have done as good a job as anybody from a, a content side. That's how my brain works just because this, this is what I do the videos y'all been putting out, the film studies where, you know, y'all, y'all talk about the points, where, where did that idea come from and how have y'all been able to, to do that? Cause I, I know technologically speaking, there's some challenges that they come up. We're, we're doing this over zoom. Maybe y'all are using zoom, but um, how did that idea come out and, and how have y'all executed it? Yeah. So Grant um, has been remarkable. And I think that as uh, the seasons have gone on and he's kind of become more incorporated into who we are, he's gotten a great vision of how he can help us um, kind of be more than we were. And that's everybody's responsibility. Every player, that part, every person that's a part of our program, their job is um, to come in and some way help us be better than we would be without them. And Grant's taken that and run with it. So um, I actually was contacted by a group um, that asked me to do kind of one of those types of videos. And so I was talking to Grant about it. And then Grant basically said, um, 
hey, what do you think about if our players did that as well? Um, and so he was going through Twitter and finding some of the videos that he posted. And then I happened to be going through just because at this point in the year, it's pretty amazing to go back and watch us play. So I had been going back and watching a lot of our matches that we had played so far this year and been clipping out fun plays. And so I sent him a copy of that and he picked a few plays out of that and I sent them to him. So he's been kind of running with that um, and communicating with our athletes. And, and that's one of the things that we told him in our first Zoom meeting as a team is like Grant's going to be working on some stuff. Um, and we're, we've been charged by, you know, our social media department to, to be positive, like to get involved, to be productive um, through that medium because we, we need content. Normally we'd be providing content um, as we play. Um, but now that we're not playing, how can we still be a positive contributor to that part of our athletic department? And honestly, what people need right now, they need some good news. They need some positive energy, some excitement. And um, so we're, it was Grant's kind of brainchild and it's, you know, our athletes doing a really good job of, uh, of kind of giving some voiceover and some insight into those plays that you wouldn't normally get. Like, this wouldn't have happened at all except for the situation we're in. So it's, it's kind of cool. Yeah. No one can question Grant's enthusiasm. He, he, he brings it every day. So um, good to hear him get a shout out. Kristen as, as a senior, how do you try to stay in contact with your teammates, um, communicate with your teammates, uh, display leadership at a time like this, where, you know, if you were in a regular season and you're seeing them every day, it's much easier to lead, whether it's vocally or by example in this situation, I know there's, a lot of things to focus on uh, and challenges to overcome for all of us, but particularly for student athletes trying to study and, and get class done and stay in shape and eat right and all the things that you're dealing with. But another task that you have or another, uh, I'm sure, uh, responsibility that your coach puts on you is, is showing leadership and keeping your team together. What have you done or what are some things that you're, you're thinking about uh, in terms of talking to your teammates, uh, keeping them mentally engaged, staying in touch, and just uh, developing and, and continuing that camaraderie? Um, I think it's just kind of reaching out to them, just kind of in a text, simple as that. Um, just like check in and seeing how they're doing, um, how they are handling all of this. Um, and we even kind of have like a like team challenge amongst ourselves where we do like a workout thing and we like send videos and stuff and like we keep points. So we've kind of been able to like keep track of like what everyone's been doing just in that amongst like the team um so that's been really cool and I get to like keep track of all the points and everything so it's kind of fun to see that but it really is just kind of reaching out texting facetiming um because it really is difficult like our team is such a tight bond and just to not see them every single day that's really hard and I definitely miss them and um want to like reach out and talk to them all coach uh, in the same vein one of the things that's unique about your sport is you have student athletes from all over the country. They're, they're, they're really spread out. What challenges does that present at a time like this? Yeah. I mean, clearly geographical, it's, it's an issue. Um, you know, we, we know that we're not going to see them face to face for a few months at the least. Then we get into summer and hopefully we start smoothly in the fall, but um, you know, so it's kind of a shift of thinking about how, how do we interact? And, you know, one of the things that we talked about them yesterday is um, between Katie Leak, who's my assistant, and I, we broke up our whole roster. And we're going to make sure that we have one-on-one -on -one, um, FaceTime with every one of our athletes every week. Um, and so we kind of broke out the week. And, you know, it's we've got 22 people on the roster, and that's a lot of conversations. But it's worth the investment. Like, And honestly, I think we even told them last night when we were, when we were talking about it, um, you know, we always enjoy when we have the opportunity to have just like a regular conversation, like, how you doing? How's the family? What's going on? Like, what are you into? Like, you know, those types of normal, not like sitting down X's and O's, like, hey, your high line needs to be better. You know, you go in too early. That's why your cut shot's terrible or whatever it is, or even positive, you know, refreshing comments about what we're doing, film study or whatever it is. So to have um, kind of the opportunity that this is going to give us to just say, Hey, how's your day? Like, how you feel today? Like, um, how's your family? Everybody's safe. Um, you know, what, what have you been doing to fill your time? Uh, like more just general, you know, real just general positive relational conversations. Um, 
you know, as we go through the, the spring, like we hope that that'll be something that will not only be productive for now, but that when we move into next fall, that that could potentially lead to a comfort, a comfort level that we've never had before with communicating with our staff. So I'm gonna put y'all both um, on the notes that, uh, sorry, I didn't that interrupt, just, no, it's okay. Just an openness that could put us in a better position to be an even stronger team. Um, so clearly not something that we would ever have done. And honestly, if we were in season and we were around and we set up weekly FaceTime calls, like while we're in season, that would be pretty awkward. And I think that people might be a little creeped out, <laughs> but since we're in this situation, like it makes sense. And I think it, I, once again, my hope is that it puts us in a position where they're going to swing by the office more often because they, they miss those opportunities to just have conversation that they, know us better as people and we know them better as people um, because the reality is the way compliance sets us up, man, when we come together, we got to be focused on sport. We got to be focused on our craft. We got to focus on our academics or our weightlifting or whatever it is, our conditioning. So the time to be able to step away from those things and invest in each other, um, you know, in a real and conscious way, my hope is that that puts us in even better position to be, kind of what sets us apart as a program. Like I really genuinely believe that our beach family that we have and how close we are and, and how much we care for each other and look to serve each other is what allows us to reach our potential. And if we can become even better with that advantage, then once again, we're increasing our potential about how good we can be as a program. I usually try at the end of these interviews to ask whoever's participating, uh, kind of off topic. What what have you been reading or watching? Um, we all have a little bit more free time, or I guess a little more at home time. Uh, free time is a relative term when, as coaches, you know, when you have kids. Um, but we are home more, and we're our TVs are nearer to us, and our books are nearer to us. So for both of y'all, what have you been watching? What have you been reading? What have you been doing to kind of clear your mind and and put all this behind you? Kristen, you go first. I'll follow you this time. All right. I have been. Binging Revenge on Hulu. I have actually, I watched it when it like first came out. And now I just, I'm like so into it. I watched like, I think I watched a whole season in about like three days. Cause obviously I have a lot of time on my hands. Um, but that has been my go-to show. What about you, Russell? Um, you know, I do think it's, I'm not a reader. Um, I've never, claim to be, but no, it's something valuable. We even talk about it every summer. We, we set up a, a book for our team to read, and that's part of kind of how we uh, continue to help build ourselves. So, you know, in this time where excuses are um, not as handy, um, I've actually, one of my friends sent me a book, and it's called Radical, um, that I'm reading right now. And it's, uh, you know, it's a, a faith-based book that is challenging me to kind of continue to push and grow in my personal walk. Um, I've got another buddy that's already said, hey, let's read a book together. So once again, the excuses are kind of leaving. I, I, I can't say, oh, I don't have time. So we'll probably, I'll probably start another one. I don't know what that one is yet, but, uh, but I'm sure it'll be productive. Um, as far as watching shows go, I think we tend to um, gravitate towards family time when we're watching. So we actually haven't had a whole, whole lot of time. We've, I've always enjoyed The Voice. So we kind of caught up as a family on The Voice. And then now that we're waiting for episodes to come out every week, we've added, we went back and caught up on American Idol. So we got our, our singing shows that we're watching as a family and and then, you know, when stuff comes out, Disney's been doing a good job of re releasing some stuff a little bit early. We watched Onward last night as a family, and that was pretty entertaining. Got some good good laughs out of that. So, yeah, I think it's it's uh, a few things reading, a few things watching, and lots of games being played. So it's a good time. Coach, for you, um, I, I just need it. Parenting tips. How are you getting through this time as a parent? Mine are four and two. Uh, they're both they're both oh. girls. So literally right before we started recording, I threw them in the car. We drove around for about 30 minutes, got them sleeping. So they, they haven't been uh, interrupting this one. But uh, parenting tips, what's been what's been valuable to you during this time as a parent? Yeah, my wife and I were actually talking about how we're glad that our children are older, that this time, this particular time would be super challenging with, 
younger kids. Um, you know, I've seen some good stuff. I actually saw Garrett Runyon. I don't know if you've been tracking him, but they bought a big blow up water slide that they have in their backyard. And they were, we were talking the other day and he was like, he got up and started walking like, where are you going? He's like, we're going to the park. And they're like, you can't get out. And they're like, no, the park in our backyard. So I think they built basically a, a kind of a water playland in their backyard. I would highly recommend that. And obviously anything that burns calories, get them, get them tired. Naps and, and good nights sleeps are, are an important part of the equation during this phase of life. Yeah. Thank God here. The weather's been good. There's been a lot of water time. Um, there's been two walks a day. We got a morning walk. We got an afternoon walk. So uh, getting, getting to plenty, plenty of sunshine over here. Thank you all so much for your time. I uh, appreciate it. It was good catching up with y'all. I hope y'all stay healthy, y'all stay safe, and uh, go Tigers. Go Tigers. Thank you Thank for the opportunity. You. Thank you.